All right, welcome to our weekly class. We're learning Bad Kodesh, which is a letter the Mitle Rebbe wrote to a government official pleading for mercy and asking uh, for a favorable outcome for his pending verdict, his trial. And this is, I think, our third time learning this, uh, this discourse. Before we get into the learning, I want to mention some names for dedications. Uh, today, I want to mention a yard site of Golda Bas Reb Meir Akoin, whose yard site is today, as well as another yard site, um, which is actually the first yard site. Today is the first yard site. Hatomim Shner Zalman, all of a shalom ben, Yubod Luchaim, Tev Maruchim, Menachem Mendel. So your site today, and then the Shamas should have an aliyah. Mm-hmm. Also, I want to mention a uh, a name for Rafur Shlema, and that is Zev David Ben Sara. Should have a Rafur Shlema. Mm-hmm. Okay, so we are on chapter what? What chapter are we on? Three. Three. Very good. Okay. So far we've been doing a chapter, a class. Let's see if we can pick up the pace. Who knows? Okay. So we were speaking, I don't want to get into the whole background, but I just want to ask one question. We were talking about spheroids and their configuration, but specifically what sphero were we focusing on last time? Malchus. Well, we will focus on Malchus. Okay. That's the whole punchline of the whole thing is Malchus, but we didn't speak about Malchus. Tiferes, yeah. Okay. So we spoke about Tiferes, and what did we say about it? Just give me one or two words. What did we say about it? Balance. Balance, yeah. That's the word. Yeah. We spoke about it being balance. Okay. Now we're going to go a little bit more into our explanation of Tiferes. Not just the balance part of it, but some of the ramifications of that. We're going to understand that a little bit more. Okay. Chapter 3, Gimel. Now, here's the explanation of why this Mida, why this divine attribute is called Tiferes. Because literally, Tiferes means beauty. beauty. <laughs> So, for instance, think about an image with colors. The color white signifies Alpi Kabbalah, Chesed, and which is kindness and goodness. And the color red signifies Gvura, which is, he mentions, the color of blood. Has that aggressive. Uh, you know, blood is, first of all, it's bloodshed, so it's that idea of aggression. But also just the fact that it's the, the vitality, it's the drive, so it has those connotations of gvura. So you have the white, and you have the red, and you can ask me, what are the other colors of the other spheroids? We're not going to get into that. But chesed is white, and gvura is red. Okay. Vikasha naisu hagvanim bimizu yafe. But when you combine the colors nicely, and you have it, an image that's, you have it in a well-measured way, combining both colors, that's when the beauty comes out, period. So what do we say so far? <coughs> that different spheroids are like different colors. But when you have the combination of colors, that's when you create beauty. <laughs> also, he's giving another example. Not just visual art, but in nature. Tiferes, the beauty of something, can indicate its taste, literal taste. 
Tam meaning here literal taste. Like the color of a, an apple. Kamara Kegovana Tpur. Shemara al which will indicate the taste. So if it's a good looking apple, it's a good tasting apple. Now, when you talk about the world of um, vegetation, everything has a breakdown of flavors in it, which we will generalize as chesed and gvura. Shehu mar, bitter taste, which that's gvura, umosuk, and sweet taste, that's the chesed. But then you have the taste that is a combination of those flavors. Yeah. Is that why I like rose-colored glasses or uh, like a symbolization of health is like in the pink? It's like a combination. Oh, you're thinking pink? Yeah. Because the red and the white is pink? Yeah, so here's the thing. The red and the white is not pink. Because then, Tiferes is not where you take hot and cold and you put them together and you get <coughs> room temperature. Mm-hmm. Tiferes is where the red stays red and the white stays white. But they combine with each other in a meaningful way. It's kind of like a dialectic. Yes. It is a dialectic, yes. Is that, is that okay? Yes. You're talking on the physical. What about the... the well, non-physical? I'm talking on every level. Okay, so what... We're primarily speaking on the spiritual level. We're only giving so physical you're... examples right. to help us to understand the spiritual. But the, the upshot of it all is that you have, like, extreme categories, red and white, um, you know, monochromatic red and white. You have sweet and bitter, like extreme sweet, extreme bitter. The Tiferes is wherever you're going to find, not a compromise, not where it just becomes nishtahin, nishtahir, you know, muddied water. Well, I don't think pink is a compromise. <laughs> well, you're not experiencing each one at right. the same time. Right. See, right. but it, the particles could be there that's giving you the observation of seeing pink. But the okay, now that's a very interesting. And, and the red particles. Okay, so now you're getting more deep into color theory than I'm equipped to. <laughs> Go, but yeah, yeah. Pink is a new entity. Okay, let's let's do another example. But it's not because it's not. It's mixed with white. Okay, but forget about colors because we're going to move on here. V'chein b'kol ariv l'nafish ma'id, also with a very sweet voice, a voice that is sweet to the soul. Kiedua binigunim, as is known regarding the melodies. According to the science of music, that the main sweetness is in the combination of the tones. Okay, so we have visual colors, standard definition of colors. We have tastes. We have tones, musical tones. Mm. Oh, we didn't mention that. We, smells are very related to uh, taste, though, so sometimes, yeah, yeah that's combined in that. Also, when you're talking about the physical yesoidais. Now, yeah, let's get, okay. Little dalad yesoidais. So we have the four elements, fire, air, Water, earth. Now, we're not talking about fire, air, water, earth as we know them. Because actually, fire, air, water, earth as you know them and experience them are not pure elemental fire, air, water, earth. They're made of combinations. Um, we're talking about the, on the elemental level, the building blocks of the physical reality. So, for instance, with the Yesoi de Sagashmim, the Eishumayim, Yeshmamutza, you have an intermediary that is made from elemental fire and water, as is known by, as, 
from the, the books of nature. In other words, we're describing some type of physical phenomenon, some type of an object um, that, is, that exists because of a balance of these building blocks. Oh, here's your smells. I'm, for, I'm sorry, I forgot that he does mention smells. V'chein b'samamonim yesh asavim, you have herbs, udvarim, and other things, toivim, that are nice, meaning they smell pleasant. Shimechayim, they sort of uh, enliven with their smells. V'yesh asavim udvarim charifim, then you have pungent, sharp herbs, shemazikim, they can actually even be harmful. Then you have smells that are made from combinations of the two. And actually, that is the foundation of medicine, herbal medicine at least, which is where you combine these different properties for treating different ailments according to the balance of cold and hot. Also on every level of the inanimate and the vegetative and the animal they're all made of some ver- variation of balance or combination of chesed and gvura. Just like we were mentioning before, seichel and midais, a person's intellect and a person's emotions. So we have all these examples of Chesed and Gvura, as they are balanced with each other, that was the main thing that we spoke about before, which, which was balance. And we're bringing out here in chapter 3 the idea that that balance produces some type of pleasant effect, what we'll call tiferes, or you can call it aesthetic beauty, or you can call it sensorial pleasure, but... The point is that through balancing the two extremes, it produces some type of a, an effect that is superior to the uh, just having each one by itself. Okay. Synergy. Synergy, yeah, you could call it that. Or dialectic, as you mentioned. Yeah, synthesis. Is, is our goal here in this world when we want to create the zero component, is that considered a balance? Yeah, you could call that a balance between the infinite and the finite, or the spiritual and the physical, yeah. I mean, he didn't mention that as an example, so I don't want to, like, go off into that, yeah. Am I jumping the gun? Because um, how do you create the balance? How do you grab I don't know, I don't know. I'm jumping the gun again. Yeah. Fast forward, sorry. Yeah, so, yeah. Is this related to the concept of Davar Vihipufo, or is that... Yeah, 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 it is, yeah, it is the concept. It's thesis, antithesis, yeah, it's a concept, yeah. Mirror opposites balancing, yeah. So it's like Avram Yitzchak and Yaakov? Like well, Avram Yitzchak and Yaakov is, is a, a, just another embodiment of this concept. And Yaakov is also called Tiferes, which is also called Emes, which we mentioned last week that Tiferes is Emes because it is able to contain everything. The Emes has to be able to contain everything. It's not just an edited portion, it's the entirety. Harmony, yeah, yeah, we're pos- uh, focusing on the harmony, yeah. Okay. Vehine zeha mamotza shakalo bimiziga toiva, me base hoprim de chesed gvoda hu shenikra emes, holo venikra tiferes canal. This harmonization of opposites of chesed gvoda, we sometimes we call it emes, like I mentioned just a second ago, because it contains within it the entirety of the, the spectrum. We call it Tiferes, we call it beauty. Ukame Shonorayim Hayefi Vahidrahu 
Be'erav ha'govin de'loivin ve'oidim be'meziga toiva ve'yofa u'nechayna b'tziur. Just like you see, like we are mentioning before, the beauty that is produced by balancing the red and the white. U'be'loivin levade ain yoifi ve'hidr klal. White by itself, there is no beauty. V'chein be'oidim levade ain yoifi. Also red by itself, there is no beauty. Beauty, and I, I was thinking, what if someone's going to say to me, well, I saw a Rothko painting that was all red, and I didn't come up with an answer to my own question, but, That's I, yeah, well, it could, it could also have to do with the, just the, the chiddush that even within the red, he was able to pull off different textures and different degrees of the red. <laughs> but at any rate, what he's saying here <laughs> is that if <coughs> you had a canvas that was all white, it wouldn't be aesthetically pleasing. And if you had a canvas that was all red, it wouldn't be aesthetically pleasing. But you take that same white and red and you arrange it, you merely arrange it skillfully, that itself becomes extremely aesthetically pleasing. It's when they are inclusive of each other that they become beauty. Also, harmonization of tones. Also, in, the, in combining different types of minerals and different types of vegetation. Also, when you have the nice color combinations like in the apple we mentioned, like it says, uh, like the, the, the apple of the, of the trees of the forest. And also in attributes and character traits. Also, if you're talking about different intellectual proclivities, where uh, you have chesed and you have din that is uh, combined. Because after all, remember that the emotional derived from the intellectual. And this is what we referenced earlier. The Mishnah and Pirkei where the question is asked, what is the derech yeshara, the straight path, meaning the preferred path, that a person should live. That which specifically is tiferes, which is beauty, meaning a good balance to the one who does it. And then also, as the Mishnah continues, not only will it be beauty, but it's beauty to the onlookers, to other people, meaning other people will also experience it as beauty. Okay, so that was chapter 3. Basically, we have all these different levels where we illustrate. <coughs> By the way, that itself is an example of Tiferes, <coughs> of Tiferes being emes, that if it's true, it's true on every level. So we could illustrate it in Seichel, we can illustrate it in Midas, we can illustrate it in visual aesthetic, we can illustrate it in tastes, we can illustrate it in uh, music. That's that Aleph through tough concept of Amos. Okay, so that, that was chapter three. Great. Can we do chapter four? Okay. Dalad. Achine adayin yesh lohoven sheirish advarim mein yochol iyeis bechines his kalos metzua. Now, but we still need to understand where does it come from, the capacity for this hiskalalus, this inclusivity, this mutual inclusivity? 
where these opposites are able to sustain each other or tolerate each other and not only tolerate each other but then complement each other. Where does this come from? from one thing and its opposite, Hamanagda, which actually is oppositional, betachlis in a in the ultimate sense. Where you have two extreme opposites, kechasid gvura, like chasid and gvura. Shubasechlamidus of our primary example, because it's the highest level of examples that we've been dealing with, is in the intellect and in the emotions. Right? We spoke about Seichel and, and Midas, how they have Chesed and Gvura, even though, as we mentioned, somebody asked, isn't Chesed and Gvura inherently uh, an emotional concept? But we said in intellect also, because after all, the emotions derive from the intellect. So in, in intellect also, you have the concept of Chesed and Gvura which is a certain thought process or a leaning or a bias or a confirmation bias even, where a certain type of mind always sort of goes toward that, that, toward that conclusion. And then we spoke about, of course, emotionally, which is the archetypical sense of chesed and gvura. All right, so you have uh, two extremes, chesed and gvura in seichel and midas. Ubechai v'tzameach. And then you have it in all these other levels like we spoke about, in the animal kingdom, in the vegetative kingdom, in the elements of fire and water. Okay. We are forced to say, this is the important concept here, we are forced to say, we must conclude, that these two middays, chesed and gvura, are not extreme or pure, absolute opposites. He calls that pshutim, but rather murkovim, which literally means composite. What we're saying is this, and this is, this is the chiddush here, that even in their extreme form, they're not pure, unadulterated, uh, elements. There's really no such thing as <coughs> chesed that has no gvura and gvura that has no chesed. Why would that be? They inherently possess their opposites within them and that's why it's possible to be able to combine them. <coughs> Because it's really not introducing something oppositional. Really, it's inherent to their structure that that opposite element is present, maybe even in a latent state, but it's there all along. Yeah. Is that like Hashem or Hashem? Um, could be. Not sure, because he doesn't use that as the example. If the opposite didn't exist, then it, then it wouldn't have its... What we're, we're, we're trying to understand is... Well, what you're saying, if the opposite didn't exist, then it wouldn't have its identity. That's true, but they don't have to get together. They could remain separate from each other, and you just have one as a point of comparison or contrast to the other. What we're asking is, <coughs> how do they ultimately work together? And we're saying the way they work together is because it's actually not an introduction of something new. It's something inherent. This is the point he's trying to make here. Even the purest chesed already has gvura. And that's why ultimately we can combine the two. They're already... They're already... Uh, intertwined. intertwined. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Guys, let's let the mimer teach us. Okay. Explaining the concept of Poshet and Murkov. Those are the two words I want to learn today. Poshet and Murkov. Poshet is simple. Murkov is composite or complex. Mm-hmm. Poshet simple means just one thing. Murkov means not one thing. It's a combination of many things, or at least more than one thing. Complexity. A simple thing a simple thing actually cannot tolerate its opposite. 
cannot, cannot abide by its opposite. But something that is Murkov <coughs> can tolerate its opposite. For instance, fire and water, as, not elemental fire and water, but fire and water as we experience them, they already are composed of all four elements, and that's why they can tolerate each other. If not, if they wouldn't already have some pre-existing um, containing of each other, then they wouldn't even be able to come together. Fire has elemental water. And water has elemental fire. As is known from the nature books. Okay, like it says in Sefer Yitzira, Sefer Kabbalah, extract the fire from the water and extract the water from the fire. <coughs> Meaning, it's already there, you just have to bring it out. And so too with all of the different um, divisions of opposites, like with tastes of, uh, of plants, where you have bitter and sweet and spicy and mellow. Also with uh, healing herbs, yachalies, hamasukan canal. You have dangerous properties as well. So it's medicine or it's poison. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's both. <laughs> it's both. It's medicine and it's poison. You have good in the bad and you have bad in the good. You have sweet in the bitter and bitter in the sweet. Also with cold and hot. And that's how you can ultimately get them to abide together. Same thing with the combination of the elements. And this is the principle upon which we will understand how the Midas HaEmes works, which Midas HaEmes, as we said, truth is also called Tiferes. How does it work? It works because it's not forcing two things together that have no relationship with, with each other. It's actually bringing out how each one of them already has a relationship with the other. Can I ask a question? Yeah. What's the difference between Tiferes and Morkai? Well, Tiferes is the name or a name of this attribute. Morkov, composite or complex, is a descriptive term we're using to understand the nature of Tiferes. Actually, not just of Tiferes, of Chesed and Gvura. In other words, the, the capacity of Tiferes is predicated on the fact that the Chesed and Gvura that it's combining are themselves Murkov to begin with. Yeah? If it wasn't Murkov, then it would, they would repel each other. Like a they would repel each other. Magnets. Oh, magnets, yeah. Yeah, that's an interesting... I mean, I don't know if that's accurate or not, but it seems... Yeah, it seems intuitive. Yeah, they would just... They wouldn't... You wouldn't be able to combine them. Yeah, you could not... You could You could not combine them. Yeah, so we're finishing over in the middle of a sentence. Zehu bo mitzad sheklulim kol echad amenagde davka like you see 
that chesed has within it. Din kemei. Hamashalom was saying a chesed kdei lavidai. Here's an example, an interesting example. I think it's 2024, it's a, people don't like it, because we're, we're very sweet people today, or at least we like to think we're very sweet. We're weakening. We're so, weakening. yeah, we get, but we get triggered very easily by some of the classical examples. So he says here, you know where you see din present within chesed? Or sheyesh bechesed midas din. Yeah, din present within chesed. Where do you see that there's din within chesed? Person who's nice to his enemy, in order to lead him to oblivion. Which could mean a lot of things. One could just mean pay him up now, so he doesn't have any schusim left over to cash in, in the world of truth. Or it could even mean you give him, give him enough rope to hang himself. You just kill him with kindness. Mm -hmm. Or uplift his soul. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah, I mean, the simple meaning here is you're kind of undermining him, which I said, you know, in 2024, we don't like that kind of harsh talk. But that's the example. Um, it's written to a politician, so that's not the same. Oh, yeah, that's right. It was written to a politician. So he would relate to that. That's, that's a very good observation. So the guy who this was written to originally who was the governor of Vitebsk, he would probably, ah, that, yes, yeah. Like the apple metaphor, I'm not sure I related to so much, but, yeah, killing someone with kindness, yeah, I, I know what that is. Yeah, diplomatic relations, right, exactly. Okay. Um, like it says, if your enemy is hungry, feed him bread. Ki gecholim ato chayse chulu, because uh, you're uh, you're stoking coals. Harei oise umalbish din kosha belavush shel chasid dafke. What is happening there is uh, you're putting din harsh judgment in a veneer or behind a veneer of of chasid. But it's in order to deliver something that's harsh, but it's taking on the appearance of chesed, yeah? And the opposite, If he hits his son in order to improve his ways, use a little, use a little corporal punishment. A little potch. A little potch. But he does it for the kid's benefit. Shemalbish chesed bedin. So that basically he's taking chesed. It is chesed. He's trying to help the kid. But he's malbish. He dresses it up in an outer appearance of din. It looks like din because he's getting a potch. But really it's love. V'nikra gvura shebe chesed o'y chesed shebe gvura ki yedua. Anyways, these two examples are... Chesed shebe gvura, gvura shebe chesed. Umeze anu royim she yochel yes shalvel reshoi. From this also an interesting thing emerges. We see how there can be shalvel reshoi, tranquility for the wicked. The wicked shouldn't be able to enjoy tranquility. It doesn't seem just. Kize omidus hadin amalubish be chesed, le shalom lohem, avur ma'at hatoiv. That's how Hashem delivers judgment to them. You think, where's the justice, God? This guy's a scumbag and he's got a good life. Well, no, actually. He's getting uh, the goodness up front. And that's the ultimate punishment. That there won't be any, any favors left for eternity. And also, conversely, how can there be troubles for the righteous. They don't deserve to be tortured. So it's the opposite. They're going to get punished up front for whatever tiny amount of not good they have. But then it frees them up to be coasting with all good stuff in the world. That's the example of what we call 
kindness that's hidden and dressed up in harsh judgment, yisurim, in the form of affliction. The At any rate, the upshot of all of this is, these are all illustrations of how you have his kalalus chesed gvura, how these two opposite traits coexist. Shemazei Yove Midas Hamitsua Canal, and that is the basis for which the entire concept of the Mida Mitsua, which is the middle or balancing vector, which we know as Tiferes or as Emes, or I think we even mentioned last week in passing, maybe Rachamim, but they're all the same concept. That at any rate, it only exists because of it, it's, it's possible to exist because. The his kalalos, the interinclusivity already exists. Okay. For who shemistayif mitzad hatayruvas teverash and nice ayidei chet adam arishin sheachol eitzadas kiduah. Another way of understanding this, the same phenomenon, is that this is the condition that derives from the chet eitzadas, the eating of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, which kabbalistically was the advent of mixing of toivera, that everything after that becomes mixtures. At she'en toiv she'en beira, to the extent that now there's no good without evil, behelam at least in a latent state, ve'en ra she'en by toiv behelam, and you don't have any ra that doesn't have, it's hidden good. There's always the opposite mixed in there. That's why, for instance, you make a bracha even on something which outwardly is experienced as a negative thing, but there is a toiv, a hidden toiv, a hidden good in it. Because there is hidden good in it. Why the generation? Oh, that's a fascinating discussion. I have a lot of theories about it, but I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> but it is. We'll table it. We'll table it. Okay. Put it on the list of Fabrengan topics. <laughs> By the way, I'm 100% serious. Call, in, call into the live call. Oh, call into the live show. Yeah, tomorrow night, Thursday night. So you know we're doing a call-in show? We started doing a call-in show format. It's fantastic. Okay. <clears throat> And as we said in chapter 2, when we have this healthy combination of these opposite attributes, we call this Rachmanis. Yeah, I mentioned that. that I thought I remembered that we, meant, we called it Rachmanis. Yeah, mercy, compassion. And we call it truth. All right. Shinikradas Vitiferis. And this is also sometimes indicated either by Das or by Tiferes. Now, where's Das coming in from? Because Tiferes, we've been speaking about that pretty uh, extensively, but w what's the Das thing? So just remember, remember the chart that we had? Das on the, is also in the middle. Das is also in the middle, very good. Das, right yeah, very good. So we're talking about that middle vector. So Das is to Chochman and Bina, what Tiferes is to Chesed and Gvura. By the way, that's why, in, interestingly enough, there are four compartments of the head tefillin. Because it's funny, you would think there should be three compartments, Chachma uh, Bina Das. But actually, because Das splits off into two directions, it has two inputs and two outputs. It combines the opposite. So Das is double. And that's why there's four compartments, because Das is double. Das more so in the Say it louder. Das, the middle section is more so like. Well, what we're saying is that these integrating midos like Tiferes and Das are only able to do what they do because it's inherently already set up that there's his kalos and midos. Okay, we have like two sentences left to finish the chapter. If there's no Das, Das is the intellectual capacity for discernment. So if there's no Das then there is no separation and refinement between good and bad, truth and falsity. 
So also this extraction one from another is also part and parcel of the middle vector. And this is like the ultimate goal of a person who is intact in his mind and in his emotions, that his mind and emotions should be in a state of consummate, it's interesting because these almost sound like opposites, but birur um, and mitzua. So mitzua is like what we were talking about, the like combination. Birur is the separation. Mm-hmm. Sound like opposites. They're actually not opposites. And maybe this itself is an illustration of what we're talking about here, that the opposites sustain each other rather than repel each other. Part and parcel of b- being able to combine things is being able to separate them. So, like, good integration also requires good definition. So, if, like, everything becomes homogenous, that's not integration. That's just, like, you know, blurring. Yeah, well, I think that's a fantastic example about pattern recognition. Because pattern recognition is, is, on one hand, is about putting something together in one unit. On the other hand, the, the way that it operates is by calling out distinctions, being able to recognize one thing from another. But through recognizing the differences, that's how you put together yeah. this over, uh, like the, the, this integrating, all-inclusive picture where it sort of comes sort of together. Like puzzle pieces. Puzzle pieces. Puzzle pieces. Well, let's say somebody sees patterns of numbers all of a sudden. Like, we have numbers all the time, but some certain numbers stick out. Like, those are put another puzzle piece, but what do they mean? Yeah, I know. But, but ostensibly, yes. And ostensibly, any symbology, this would be true. Whether it's numbers, notes, letters. Why didn't he bring up, like, the masculine and feminine? Yeah, I don't know. Could have brought up masculine and feminine. There, there's so many examples he could have brought up. I don't know. Well, if it's MS, it goes to everything. And if it's MS, ostensibly it applies to every level. Okay, fine. So that was the end of chapter four. four.